Martin Schwartz, who has been working on the water spray over here. Everybody familiar? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, most of you have to wear your uh, oh, have last week. Uh, we use a uh, low farmer of uh, that API for our business logic related to um, to our green tool. And uh, both of these are extremely well connected. And the main work is actually QGIS. We use QGIS desktop and QGIS so, um, You'll see why we need it. Uh, all right. So what's the QGIS for you? Um, as my colleague said, uh, oh, we have a working mic again. Nice. Um, as, our, as my colleague Marco said, uh, we need to draw polygons on, uh, on the maps to see uh, what kind of authorizations uh, people have, right? Uh, municipalities, especially munici uh, big, small or medium municipalities, they have that need. They want some user-friendly uh, way to do it. So what have we come across? Uh, we've come across QG's desktop. Internally, we do uh, everything with QGIS. We implement the maps, the, the extents, uh, the scales, everything in a QGIS project or several, depending on the uh, client type. Um, these projects are then uh, transposed into QGIS server. And after that, we use QGIS server capabilities uh, to perform our uh, business logic. Uh, QGIS server generates the PDF and we'll see more on the next few slides. All right, so this is uh, typically uh, the workflow. So we create and customize the QG's uh, desktop projects uh, with the clients. Uh, the, the, this phase right here uh, requires a lot of communication with the client and a clear understanding of, of the problem. This is a, a big part because uh, this QG's desktop projects are then sent to QG server and uh, they are sent in two ways. Uh, you either save it directly to a database, right? Uh, you, you save the QGIS project to the database or you have uh, a, a QGIS file and you edit the QGIS to consume that file. And afterwards, after all of this is, is, is done, a QGIS has a project, a QGIS server has both um, the QGIS um, project and the connection to the database. That's something that uh, should have been here, but we use... Um, we use PG service the uh, PG service file to uh, indicate the database database connection. After all, all of this is done, we set up QG server. We um, we recommend if you never use it to follow the the documentation on the QG server section of the the QG tool, and we use a simple request to do that. All right. So now to the main part of what we do. So. In, in every project, for this spring tool to work, we use QGIS templates. I don't know, uh, has everybody here worked with QGIS templates or... Um, well, yeah, all right. Uh, good enough. So, we, in QGIS server, you, after you set it up, uh, obviously, you have a, um, a request called the get project settings request. In that request, you have everything that, that we need. Um, but for us, we really only need uh, this specific XML node because this specific XML node uh, gives us everything uh, we need for our templates. Uh, this is a representation of uh, what the node has. Uh, you can have uh, the composer templates node can have many templates, as many as you, as you wish. It can have many labels, which have a... a their, their own name, uh, the map, which has an item name, a height, a width, and a name. Uh, this is one-to-end, -one, but ignore that. This should be one-to-one one -one right here, all on this side. Okay, so here is um, a representation of the object. And um, why is this important? This is important because um, what we really want to do is we want to pass... Um, we want to pass label values uh, from our uh, WebGIS framework, in this case, Map Store, which we extend. We want to get these values from uh, the user, the user inputs it, and we want to have a way to pass it to QGIS server. And then QGIS server will take, for example, these names right here, or these names right here, it'll, it'll attach the value, and it, it will be able to print. And you'll, you'll know exactly. 
ex and this is, ex is essentially what uh, what I um, what I've described, which is you can know how many templates, what labels you want to pass the value to. Uh, you can also pass uh, map information uh, to that, and uh, you pass this information with the get print uh, request on QG server. Um, and here we have a quote uh, that pretty much settled us on the QG server um, choice because we could have gone for something like map fish print, but we weren't really satisfied uh, with its workflows. It was kind of archaic and uh, it was very, very time cons consuming for us. Uh, so um, when we read that QG server has the capability to create print layouts in PDF or pixel, and especially, especially the second phrase, that, which is print layout windows in the published project are used as templates. And um, you have the possibility to specify parameters. Then that's that's huge. That's basically means we can have, we can just set a map and then pass it values from the client side to the backend. Have QG server generated, and uh, the QGIS project that feeds into the um, the QG server. Uh, it just sets up everything very nicely. All right, but. Here's a um, here's where we we first we didn't we had everything except a way to highlight a polygon and a specific uh, symbology because I mean, uh, we had a template we could send um, values to the labels we could send values to the map including extent scales and uh, other information we needed but we needed to have a way for QG server to render a polygon so that's when after some digging we found highlight geom polygon which has a name suggests highlights a um, a polygon uh, geometry um, and then we also found highlight symbol because um, if if you specify just uh, highlight geom uh, polygon without I like the symbol, you just get the default option. Uh, but with uh, with both of these, uh, you can specify an SLD after this and just write it out on a GET request. All right, but why have we um, chosen Map Store? It, essentially because um, Map Store uh, uses uh, an ecosystem which we had the know-how already. We already had know-how in React. We already had know-how in open layers, uh, leaflet. Uh, the licensing is super important, obviously, because uh, we needed the <laughs> we needed something we could actually uh, use and um, not have to to pay licensing fees. Um, and a big big part of it is that Map Store. I don't know if any of you has any read the documentation on uh, Map Store. Uh, yeah, it's super, I'd say it's super user friendly and even for developers it was super easy. So that also saved us time. So we, um, uh, we just, uh, we, we took it. Uh, and also responsiveness out of the box was a major, major plus for us. All right, so basically um, the process is we, um, we draw the polygon on the map uh, with Map Store. We add the polygon as a layer to the table of contents. Uh, the map engine on the front end, on this case, uh, open layers, will allow us to retrieve the polygon's coordinates and the coordinate reference system. Uh, just a, a quick note, Map Store internally in its maps uses uh, EPSG 4326. All right, so we had to work around that. So if you're ever thinking of implementing something of, of the sort, just uh, remember. Um, so after all this is, is done, we need the user data, which is uh, dependent on the client's requirements, uh, to, to generate the location spun PDF. And of course, Map Source 2 extensibility and the documentation made this a uh, whole lot easier for us than uh, making a solution from, from scratch. So here's how it works. So as you can see, it's just a plugin, right? We have right here the, the, print, the measuring tool, which you can measure uh, a line an area and bearing, and you can add it uh, to the top or um, uh, download the GeoJSON. But this right here is the main thing. As you can see, you have here a polygon with um, distances uh, on here, right? This polygon it was already added to the table of contents. And here you have the values that we want to pass to our PDF, right? 
um, this here is a new feature that we're working on and which maybe we can if we have time i maybe go uh, go back to this so this is the the workflow it's a bit technical but it's actually easy to understand uh, we've already went through this which is the the draw polygon adds to the table of contents fill in the data by the user to the map store too which is the gis uh, the web gis framework um, Map store then has to send user data and other data. It's mainly mapping data. Um, our backend needs to validate the data. Uh, our backend uh, also queries the QGIS projects with the get project settings um, uh, request, returns the template data, performs business logic. It may be um, maybe controls, maybe a simple counter. May this part right here is where um, this is mostly dependent on the business, um, on our clients. It may be very simple, maybe very complex, but this is where we need to pay most attention. After we ensure that um, the business logic side is um, completed, is done accordingly, we can invoke the get print request. The QG server will generate the, the PDF and it will return it to the user. And this is what the end product actually looks like. Um, you have here these values that if we remember were filled right here, these values right here, we fill them out and with QG server, we were actually able to transpose it here. Now, how, do we do, uh, how did we do this? This is basically an empty label in which we can set its, um, uh, its contents through a request through a REST, a sort of REST um, request. Here you have a polygon drawn with our SLD. This is our SLD, which colors this in, um, in a pinkish, no, purplish uh, kind of tone with the one, uh, the one 1000 scale. Um, this is all pre-configured uh, pre template, as you can see right here. All of this is pre-configured. All of this uh, is um, fillable, mean, meaning what you fill in the plugin will actually come here. This is one of one of the maps as this uh, this scale. But on the next slide, we see that this one has a further out scale and you have the legend here already. This for municipalities, this is uh, very good um, because this is uh, a way to make um, uh, a process that typically was reserved for um, more um, niche technicians to become more mainstream to allow builders to um, to do this to allow regular people uh, to do this so this was actually a major step and it it also allows for more flexible layouts uh, th this ones are, are pretty simple and this is just a um, uh, a preview of a project that's um, uh, upcoming for uh, one of our municipalities for Santa Cruz das Flores municipality which is coming uh, coming very soon and um, let me see. Now, if you have any questions, feel free. Thank you, Marco Ricardo. Okay, we have a question. Do you publish this plugin somewhere? Can I find it on the internet? Do you publish this plugin? Okay. Do you plan to, to publish it? Uh, maybe you send uh, an email. Maybe we can convince, convince the other uh, of the companies. Okay, so, so I can buy it. Yes, for sure. I mean, yeah, 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 basically, yeah, you can. Okay, thank you. We have still time, yeah. Is it working? Okay. And uh, is it possible to use uh, map stores only with uh, QG's desktop? Uh, okay, and no, because map store uh, is from Geosolutions Solutions, and they had their own print tool, which is Mapfish Prints, uh, and they used only Mapfish Print. We were only able to use QG's desktop because uh, we made a plugin that calls QG server and since we could do that and we work with QG server and QG server is a server 
we were actually able to use the Fuji's test of, but it's only because we introduced Fuji's server into the uh, The Maps work natively does not have uh, this plugin. So what we did was we took a plugin, and we looked at whether that was to we looked at a plugin, and we saw what we could do with it, and we integrated a Fuji server, and with Fuji server, we could easily make it an actual Fuji's test plug. But we're asking every question about Map Store that's not even in QG server as a default. It's Thank very you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Some one or two follow up question. Okay, if not, thank you very much. It was a beautiful presentation and good luck. Thank you.